Hello and welcome to day two of the Cape Brath Trail. I'm just camped at a loch on the way, or heading towards Reconach, I think it's called. And last night I had a really warm night's sleep with the sleeping bag. The inner nest helps as well with blocking the wind. And I've just had my breakfast. It was uh, Rice Krispies and Honey Nut Cheerios, or Honey Cheerios. Now, there's also some protein mix in there, which is a, a kind of food supplement. Uh, so I'll drink that a bit of it later, before I leave. Uh, but yeah, time to get packed up. I've had to put my down jacket on, it's yeah, really chilly this morning. And a bit breezy. And then we'll get headed off back on the trail. And we'll see what that's like for today. But yeah, slept not too bad, considering. It's just the thought of packing everything. I should have walked a bit further and just camped maybe down here at this overflow car park. Uh, you've got the Sandwood Bay Visitor Centre just up there and there's a fresh water tap as well. Uh, I just stopped at the locking back there. Oh well, you let them learn. The thing is this is uh, really, I'm kind of a day ahead of myself because the first day when I arrived at the lighthouse, that was maybe my first night because I didn't expect to get there as quick as I did. So I'm kind of, yeah, halfway through a route that I shouldn't be on. But yeah, a bit of a long uh, trek now down, down to Rionich, is it Rionich? Where the hotel is, and then you cut across. So yeah, I'll just bash on. Because I'm, I should be camping at Rionich tonight by my original route, which would have been the day two camp, but it's only seven mile from here, so I might just batter on. Struggling in the wind. Cool. Need a little bit of DIY. A couple of trips to the B and Q sorted. <laughs> Some of you, once you get to the top of the hill, when you start looking back down. Wow. Hey, catch up. I was coming along the road there, I stopped off at the old schoolhouse. It's a cafe come takeaway and I couldn't help myself get but get a nice bacon and egg roll for my lunch and a can of full fat coca-cola and that should get me right through to the next stage 
superb. There really is some beautiful scenery. I love this part of Scotland, it's just absolutely stunning. Some beautiful houses here as well. Yeah. Makes you wonder what they do for a living. It'd be great to be able to live up here somewhere, eh? retire, win the lottery. And views like that on your doorstep, I mean look at that house here. And yeah, look at the views. Spectacular. It really is. I can just see the hotel in the distance. Follow this road right round. You can see over there the white buildings. Lovely. Check out the mountains. So we just made it to the Reconic Hotel. You see the police station behind. And basically all the hills on that or the hills just over there behind the police station that's where I've wandered round this hotel here oh, not very busy Just down to the hotel, this is where it breaks off and it follows kind of the river beat and kind of fish and that. But the trail kind of goes along here and through and it looks a bit rugged to say the least. The Cape Wrath Trail has every type of terrain going from tarmac, gravel, bog and marsh and the inevitable river crossings. And my advice would be to choose and test your planned footwear wisely. Something that I should have done a lot better. I found that the torsional stability of these Innovates were a bit of an issue due to their low cut and to be honest they're not much higher than the shoe version. In this section of the trail I started developing ankle pain after a few miles when kind of side hilling shall we call it where the trail was angled down towards the edge of the lock and my left foot was moving about trying to compensate for the slippy uneven ground Just having a breather and I've seen some fish jumping for flies so I'm just sitting watching this lock here but the path coming along there was just treacherous it was just a bog fest and there was one fairly wide river crossing which was about shin deep but if I pan the camera you'll see the other locks going through what time is it? Oh. 2 o'clock so I've been on the go since 7 so I'm going to try and yeah, get round this other lock and yeah, just see how far I can get That section round there is a peach, an absolute peach. Also because of the low height of the footwear, my feet were soaked and as I walked through the many miles of wet, boggy track, combined with wet socks, it really started to aggravate the blisters I'd got from day one. I would hate to have done that in the rain, but the view that way is uh, lovely. And I'm heading across to over that bump there, that little hill, and it should meet up, or it should meet up with a Land Rover track that comes down off the hills over there, maybe about two miles away. The fine looking mountain in front with the shattered quartzite and its curved ridge is called Arkel and it's a Corbett at 787 metres in height. I made it to the Land Rover track at last. I just made a beeline right across there. 
on the GPS I was actually seen to kind of go a bit further along kind of round and I was like no nope. I could see the track and I was like nah beeline for it what a rugged place now I need to find somewhere to get the tent up for tonight and call it quits sun to eat and let these uh, legs rest they're absolutely throbbing Water for tonight, lovely. Get supper on. Chicken corma rice that will do. Might get some dilute juice on the go for later. Oh. Ow, 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 ow. So arse. Oh, there's a rock there. Bloody hell. It's not one thing, it's another. Ow. <laughs> Hot coffee. I've got this uh, chicken korma on the go. This thousand calorie one. Looking forward to trying it. Absolutely starving. Made up some juice for later. Some dilute juice. I've got some water for breakfast. But yeah, started at 7 o'clock this morning from uh, Sandwood Bay and just walked down. I'm not far from, is it Lock Stack or Stack, sorry, Stack Lodge. It's just down behind the tent in the forest, in the wooded area. Forest, wood, it's down there. I've decided just to camp here. It was the first kind of flat that I've seen and yeah, the legs couldn't take anymore. I was just desperate to get stopped. What I'll do is I'll put the distances down below what it is I've actually covered. Yeah. I think it's a fair bit. And yeah, I'm gonna have this, have that. I'll let you know how that tastes in a minute. A rain storm, a rain shower. Right, let's try this korma. It certainly looks like a korma. That's good. It's actually got a bit of a kick to it. It's really spicy. That's excellent. I can safely say that this chicken korma is superb. It's nice and spicy. It's a bit like a Bombay bad boy, but you can def definitely taste it's a, a korma. It's really, really good. Mm. Lots of chicken as well, big pieces. That is absolutely one of the best outdoor meals I've had. So I'm going to finish this off. Yeah, do a bit of admin and then probably hit the sack. I've got some uh, audio books I'm going to listen to. And yeah, just try and relax the legs uh, for tomorrow. So that's it for this one. Uh, yeah, hope you can join me for part three.
we'll see how we get on as we pass through further south and yeah, we'll see how my legs cope. Now we get on. I think the rain's going to start actually in a second as well. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching as always. Uh, please hit the bell notification and you'll get notified as soon as I've managed to edit the next part of the trip and I put it up. So as always, take care and thanks for watching. This is without a doubt one of the steepest climbs I've done yet. Oh God.